what I like about the river. I like to sit and watch. It brings peace and I love to see the birds and particularly the ducks. And when I'm near a river, it often reminds me of my childhood because I used to swim in uh, rivers in Wales. Um, and I think the clearer the river is, the more you can just stand there for hours and hours and just look at it. It's sort of peaceful and serene and it takes you out of the hustle and bustle of the city. It's kind of like a bit of escapism. You can run along it and you'll see ducks, you'll see riverboats, you'll see boatmen who earn a living from it. So it's lovely, it's vibrant and it's always changing. But I quite like the fact that you don't actually know what's going on in the river at all. Like underneath it, what sort of animals are passing through. They provide kind of a source of life in like a city and like we always build things around them and they're, yeah, they're kind of like a natural heartbeat in places. Rivers are one of the last natural places in urban environments, so it makes me really sad when I see plastic in it. In the next 10 years, it's forecast that there will be more plastic put into the ocean than has ever been produced in the history of mankind in the next 10 years. So we're about to unleash a torrent of plastic on the planet like the planet has never seen. And the oceans potentially won't survive it. Plastic is in the air we breathe. Plastic is in the drinking water, in tap water. Plastic is in sea salt. Plastic is in honey. So it's showing that it's in the air, it's in the pollen, it's in the wildflowers, and it's in our environment. Now that stuff that's getting dumped into the river, aside from the obvious, uh, like wet wipes and uh, things like uh, cotton buds, um, that's a good example of something that's actually hard plastic, which should be biodegradable, but they're not. So they get flushed into the toilet, they get released to the sewer overflow, and they end up in the river. Now, Unfortunately, as with all plastics, whether they be bottle caps, which tend not to get flushed down the toilet and through the sewer, but they do overflow from the bins and with the rains get washed then into the river and sent out to sea. But as with all hard plastics, they don't ever go away. There's no away when it comes to plastic. There is only dust. So that eventually, perhaps after 100 years or 200 years, will break down into millions of pieces of dust at which point you can't see it. But when it becomes dust, it becomes airborne, so it can get picked up by the wind, it can go back up into the clouds and come down as rain. But it all starts on land, and if we can reduce what goes in, then we can reduce what goes into the ocean. Here, Dad. When you're on a stand-up paddleboard, you're actually seeing the earth or the foreshore from a new perspective. First, when you're standing, actually physically standing on a stand-up paddleboard, you have an overview of your surrounding, which is very different than the sensation you have when you're, when you're looking at the river from the foreshore. You have water beneath you, you have that, that um, 360 um, vision of everything around yourself, which makes you, I think, really much more likely to realize, um, to, to feel that, that connection to nature. We started uh, to organize um, sub cleanups. The advantage being that when you're, when you're on a standard paddleboard, you can access places that you wouldn't necessarily have access to if you're just walking along the foreshore. And we would be focusing on the trash that gets blocked on, on waterways in some specific area where they accumulate or floating also waste. It's all about 
um, creating that connection between towns and oceans, between the gesture that you have here and the impact that it has on nature somewhere else. Well, the stand-up paddleboard is just a way to get into that story. Get everyone together. It's going to get some buckets as well. Carrying them, yeah, carrying them around is easier. And this particular one is because an expedition board, so it carries lots of junk. So it's great for this. It's really engaging people in the whole issue of plastic pollution and opening their eyes to what's happening because they're not really going to solve it by going and picking up some bits of plastic from the river but they'll make an area look better for maybe a few weeks sometimes maybe less than that um, but it will get them to see what's happening that's the important thing and then they can start to question how they use plastic in their own lives and maybe start to challenge the people that are um, dishing this stuff out, making it really hard for us to avoid plastic. Yeah, it's totally about raising awareness, because cleaning up is a, is a, a pretty futile exercise. It, it, uh, maybe getting the plastic out of the trees is quite worthwhile, because that stays in the trees for a long time, and it looks awful. Really, we've got to stop it at source, and we've got to get government uh, on board with this so that they tax plastic and push people away from using so much single use plastic. Milk cartons. Lots of those. And these are from the pubs, the riverside pubs, where you're not generally allowed to have glass anymore, so they give you these if you're drinking outside a pub. This is a stack of uh, five of them. <laughs> Conveniently packed. So on the foreshore, like this, um, and this is a draw dock, which is a, a bit of a litter trap, then you'll find a lot of these bottles, oops, this sort of stuff. Um, and coffee cups and when we're out on the water um, more uh, things like this 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 hangs from the trees it gets trapped or trapped on the trees and just hangs there probably for years until you release it gradually breaks down and becomes microplastic gets into the river there's a, a plastic bottle full of plastic beads somebody's just decided to lose in the river more styrofoam. This is uh, again packaging for something. This can be replaced by um, shredded cardboard packaging. Really, it doesn't you don't really need this very often. This is uh, a waste of time. If we pollute our oceans, we degrade our fish stocks and our own marine life to the point where they're plasticized. Then it's going to come back to us. So it's really uh, most important that we do simple things. Increase our recycling rates, refuse straws, refuse single-use plastics, uh, do our best to help the environment, clean it up when you see it. If you're walking down the street and you see something, pick it up. Don't be shy, you know. Wear it as a badge of honor that you're doing something good for the environment and good for the planet. And everybody has a role. We all have a role to minimize our plastic footprint and to create a better future. And without it, if it's laissez-faire and we do nothing about it, well, you know what, we just throw it away and, you know, it'll get back into the ocean. A lot of people say, not my problem, out of sight, out of mind. But when it comes back to us in our food source, it's our problem. It's a human issue.